Hi, this is Barrett with West Coast Electric Cycles. I'm going to show you how to install software and program your sine wave controllers. The first thing I'll do when you purchase a controller is I will send you via email a link to download the programming software as well as the USB to TTL device driver. Once you have that, you can uh, install the software. So let me go ahead and we'll start with install, installing the, the, the programming software, which is the Extended Parameter Designer, or XPD for short. So take your, your link that uh, I send you via email and download it to your computer. You can download it wherever you wish. Uh, in my case, it's in the Downloads folder uh, under Controller Programming. So I'll open up that file first, and you'll see three folders here, or three, two folders and a, a driver file. We're going to go to the folder that says install first. We're going to open that up, and we're going to install these three files up top. And we're going to start with Python 2.7.1. So I'll go ahead and install this, and you can install it for all users or just yourself. doesn't matter. And proceed with that. Okay, and we can finish that. We'll do the next one up, the Pi Serial. Install that. And then lastly, the PYGTK. And you may need to log in as an administrator or run as an administrator. Uh, to install these files. Alright, so once we have these three programs installed, we can now run XPD. So if you click on the next folder here, this is the actual XPD software. Uh, so in here we've got some various files. Uh, there's some uh, ASV files, which are the pre-programmed uh, values, but we'll talk about that in a minute here. Um, but really all you have to do is open up the, what's called the XPD down at the bottom here, the Python file. You open that up, and XPD is this software right here. Okay, so we have the XPD software extended parameter designer. It is up and running, and we have a, a variety of um, pre-configured settings, uh, honestly, that we won't use. Okay, so software is installed. So the next step is to install the USB to TTL driver for Windows 10. Uh, this should also work for Windows 7 and Windows 8. And we're going to click Yes, Next, and we do want to accept the terms of the agreement. Of course, you can read that. Uh, as you wish, and finish. And so now we should be able to plug in our programming device. This is a USB to TTL chip that's in this little case here, and then this will plug into our controller. So I'll plug that device in, and then I'm going to go to my device manager on my control panel. And if I click on the ports, COM and LPT, uh, you should see a prolific USB to serial COM port. And over here on the very right, it says COM4. Okay, that's important. We want to remember that COM port because we're going to have to tell XPD that's the port that we're using when we program our controller. So we'll remember that COM4. And depending on which USB port you have your device plugged into, that may change um, each time you plug it in or unplug it or restart your computer. That may change. So double check that. Uh, before you go into the XPD software. So COM4 will remember. Uh, so now we are ready to do our programming. So I'm going to plug my the uh, pin connector, the five pin connector from my USB device into on my controller. I have a, uh, a connector here that's program, five pin program and it should be a mating connector and we'll go ahead and plug that in. Okay, it's a little stiff to start with. Okay, and we're going to run XPD. Okay, so down here where it says serial port, this is where we want to select COM4. Okay, now 
the first thing I like to do is download the current or existing stock software from your controller. I have a 6FET here, but whatever you know, quantity MOSFET control you have, the 12 or the 18 or the 24, um, doesn't really matter. But what we want to do is upload the existing settings so we know where we're starting from. So I'm going to click the download button. I'm going to type in what I want to call for my profile. Um, and in this case, I'm just going to call it the 6x377 factory stock settings. And for controller group, we're going to select the KH6 or the Infineon 4. Okay, and then we'll click new. And so now it's looking for the controller. And it's waiting for a signal. So a couple of things. The ground wire does not, on the cables, does not have a uh, momentary switch. And so what we need to do is disconnect and reconnect this connector. And you'll see when we do that, that's the point that it sends the signal to XPD. All right, so we have our factory setting, and these are the settings that come on your on your device. So controller model, and I'll make this a little bit bigger here. We don't need it quite that wide. So first thing, the controller model, and I'll explain these a little bit here. So KH606, uh, the KH6 is the board uh, generation, and then the last two digits, the 06, relates to how many MOSFETs are on the controller. And so in this case, it's a 6-FET six six MOSFET. So it's an 06. If we had a 12-FET, we'd use the KH612. If we have an 18, we'd use the KH618. Choosing these different um, controller models will uh, permit the software to use different uh, uh, values for uh, maximum current, uh, things like that. If, uh, if you're trying to use the 606 on an 18 FET controller, it'll limit you on how much current you can use. Uh, so do definitely uh, select the appropriate controller model that you're programming. Um, so we'll leave that at 606. Uh, battery current limit. A little bit about these limit settings. So the controllers that uh, I sell have a, a shunt mod, uh, which basically means that we um, trick the controller's board into thinking that there's uh, more resistance than there actually is. Um, so effectively what that means is when you program the um, the battery current limit it actually produces higher than what's displayed here. Uh, in this case uh, the output desired, the actual current output desired is about 30 amps. Uh, so normally we would program this to about between 20 and 25 amps to get a rea real life 30 amps from the controller. Um, for uh, 18 FET controllers, again, if we want a, a real life limit of 80 amps, we might program this to between 50 and 60 amps. So there, it's a little bit um, off as far as the values. Uh, you want to set it lower than uh, the, the, the real current that you want to get. Uh, same thing with the phase current limits. Um, in this case, uh, phase current limits are going to be based on the winding of your motor. So typically a phase current limit is going to be roughly two to three times the battery current limit. Uh, if we had a battery current limit of 25, then we want a phase current limit of anywhere from 50 to 75. Uh, so I'm going to change this to 75 amps uh, for the battery current limit. You'll notice that uh, it will sometimes round up or down a few tenths of a point over current detection delay, I like to set at about uh, 0.3, 0.2 to 0.3 seconds. Uh, that just minimizes the opportunity for the controller to, to um, uh, have too much current, uh, to exceed the current limit. Uh, I do like to enable the soft start, so I'll click that. Uh, and then the soft start time, depending on how much ramp up you want, uh, I like anywhere from 2 to 4. Um, and that's just a value, it isn't necessarily seconds or anything, it's just a, a rough value of time. Battery voltage, uh, if you have a cycle analyst display that's protecting your battery uh, low voltage or a BMS on your battery, then this really isn't very important. You can take that all the way down to 0.3 volts, the lowest setting. Uh, same thing with the battery low voltage threshold. We can rely on the, the, 
batteries BMS and the cycle analyst to, to limit the low voltage cutoff. The speed mode I like to set to the switch. Typically that'll be like a three position rocker switch. And then for speed limits, uh, what I typically like to program is 50%, 75%, and 100%. That's typically what I will set for my uh, speed and current. Uh, so 50% speed, 50% current, and then 75% speed, 75% current, and 100% speed, and 100% current. Speed limit 4. Uh, this only applies if you're using a four, uh, basically a momentary switch that cycles through four different settings. And so if you set it to cycle four and you have a momentary push button switch on your handlebar, then this will work, but actually the controllers that I have are set up for a, a three position switch. So uh, current uh, speed and current limits number four don't really apply. Uh, you can just leave these at 100. Uh, default speed really doesn't change. It's going to always default to speed two uh, unless you have your switch, uh, your three-way switch plugged in and switched to either one or three position. Uh, so you don't really need to set the default speed there. Uh, limit speed, I, I generally don't change this. It doesn't really have much of an effect. You can leave it at 100. Reverse speed we don't have reverse and so you can set that to the lowest setting. Slow speed, usually I'll set this to about 50 and then recovery speed 50 is generally pretty good. Regen braking. If you have a direct drive hub motor, regen braking is a great feature. If you have a geared hub motor or a mid drive, uh, you do not need uh, regen braking and so you can uncheck this and ignore the values here. Uh, most of the motors I sell and, and uh, for the, these controllers, these are great for direct drive hub motors, and so I will almost always enable regen braking, enable EBS. EBS force has a wide range of values. You can go all the way down to zero and all the way up to 200. So zero to 200, there's lots of fine adjustment there. Um, depending on the controller and the winding or the KV of your motor that you have, you'll need to kind of play around with this value to get uh, and also how much, how strong you want your regen to, to, to feel, you know, how hard you want it to break. So I'll usually, you know, when I'm first getting set up, I'll set it to, you know, maybe anywhere from 100 to 150 uh, and then kind of play around with that. EBS limit voltage. Uh, this uh, confuses a lot of people. Um, if you have a 48 volt battery, some people think that you would not necessarily want to charge your battery beyond the um, the charge current or the charge voltage of your battery uh, for a 48 volt battery. However, okay, um, uh, setting it too low will result in a very weak or very low regen uh, force. And so what I've taken to to do over um, over time is just max out the limit voltage. The reality is the controller is never going to over uh, volt the, the battery uh, inappropriately unless you're starting with a fully charged battery going down a very long hill. Okay, that's really the only case where you could potentially over volt charge your battery. Uh, setting this way higher than your charge voltage actually isn't that much of a concern. Uh, it'll give you a little bit stronger braking force. Uh, the very maximum you could do would be 277.6, uh, but that may be a little bit strong for uh, a force, so definitely start at a lower setting, um, and, and again, play around with the voltage and the force. Um, ideally, if you're monitoring regen force with your cycle analyst version 3, uh, oftentimes a good amount of braking force is going to be anywhere from 10 to 15 amps. Okay, negative current going back into the battery. That's going to be pretty typical. Uh, and that's what most people uh, will, will prefer as far as braking force is between 10 and 15 amps of braking force. PAS level, um, I generally don't set. I don't use the PAS and uh, for start pulse I'll usually max that out at 255. That'll essentially disable the PAS. 
Um, I'll, I'll typically use the cycle analyst version 3 as my PAS uh, control driver uh, as opposed to d directly to the controller. Flux weakening, I'll usually turn this off. Um, you'll notice up here in the speed settings, uh, speed limit 3, you can actually bump that up to 130%. And this is kind of where flux weakening would come in. You can essentially overdrive or overvolt your motor if you want to gain uh, additional speed from a motor that isn't designed to go fast, like a high torque, uh, low speed uh, winding motor, a low KV motor. Um, you can do that, but uh, I generally prefer not to go over 100% speed because it gets very inefficient uh, power-wise when you run beyond 100% speed. So I usually will leave flux weakening to zero. Uh, the other, two, the other uh, uh, inputs here I generally don't mess around with. Uh, I would just leave those set to zero. External devices, hull sensor angle, uh, occasionally you might get a control or a, a motor that's got hull sensors are at 60 degree angles instead of 120. Most of the direct drive hub motors are set to 120. Auto cruising time, six seconds. This is if you have a constant, um, constant voltage uh, feed from the throttle. After six seconds, it will put it into cruise mode, but you also have to have the cruise button set up for the controller. There's a, a device that you can plug into the cruise for the controller. Um, you can adjust this up or down depending on how easily you want cruise to enable. Uh, limit cruise, uh, we don't quite know what that is for, so we leave that to, to know. Uh, the rest of these, um, throttle blowout protection, we do want to keep that enabled. And then uh, LED indicator, common ground uh, is fine. Okay, so this is uh, just kind of a rundown of the settings that we we'll use for the six MOSFET controller, 25 battery amps, 75 phase amps. In reality, this will be a little bit over 30 amps, uh, again, as I mentioned before. Okay, so we'll save that. So here's where we do the programming. So we'll save. All right, and now we have to go select that that we just saved. And uh, now we can upload that to our to our uh, controller. So select it and click upload and it says setting uploaded successfully. You'll notice we didn't have to unplug and replug in our connector there. All right uh, and again we were still on COM port 4 so that was our device uh, COM port number. So we are all set. Uh, the, the settings that we made here should have uh, been updated to the controller. Uh, we can go and edit that if we want to make adjustments. Oftentimes what I'll do is I'll copy if I want to keep my factory settings and then just uh, make a copy of that. Um, we can just uh, change it um, and say test one or something like that. Uh, and then make a few changes. Maybe we want to bump this up a little bit, 27 amps, and bump that up a little bit more to 85 amps. Just to eke out a little bit more power there. And, other settings if you want to adjust those and click save and so then if you wanted to update uh, the test one again you just click on the version of the file that you want to update and click upload and you'll see down here it says settings uploaded successfully so that's it hopefully this was informative and uh, useful for you if you have any questions uh, shoot me an email um, hope you enjoyed it thanks so much